two, one, two, testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Here we go. Microphone test. Microphone test. Microphone test. Thank you. One more time. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Testing one, two, one, two. There we go. That sounds more, more like it. <laughs> Definitely. Lovely. Thank you. Right, well, thank you very much. There we go. So we're, we're, I think we're up and running. So first of all, let me say a big hello. Hello! Ooh, fantastic. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for, for coming here today to Adorama. I'd love to thank Adorama for making this possible. Let's give Adorama a huge round of applause and a cheer. Well done. Fantastic. And we are being joined by the internet as well this afternoon. So uh, just to warn you, if you shouldn't be here in the audience, if you're playing hooky, you may be on live stream, so uh, that's just something to bear in mind. So uh, if you're on the internet audience, thank you. Hello, internet audience. It's very kind of you to join us as well. Uh, so what are we going to do this afternoon? Well, this afternoon for the next 90 minutes, or give or take a few minutes, uh, we're going to do a little bit of work with Flash. 
Just One Light is what I, I've called this, because we're going to do a few things that you can do with a single solitary speed light or flash gun. I, I come from an era when these things were called flash guns, because when I started 25 years ago, that's what they were. They were flash guns. And they were brilliant. I, my first camera, my very first SLR, I had a uh, Practica. And it came with a, a camera body and a lens and a flash. You just, just got one of these things. Now, the flash guns are so sophisticated, so intelligent. They're actually rather clever. How many of you in the audience here have got a flash gun, speed light? Say, so, hey, that's pretty good. If you haven't, then you know where to go and get one, don't you? Just around the corner and use your little discount vouchers if you're in the audience. You can go and get a, a $20 off, which is kind of handy. Because these things are one of the best things you can buy to, to really change how your photography works. Because it doesn't matter about the time of year. The flash is what really makes the picture happen. So what can you do with flash? Well, you don't have to do the, the obvious pictures. You don't have to do portraits, because that's what most people do. And if you're sticking around tonight, if you're coming back tonight, then you'll see me using the, uh, the flash to do all sorts of stuff that's nothing to do with portraits. Um, sorry, internet audience, you're, you're not going to get to see that. You should have been here. Uh, there you go. So uh, that's what we're going to do later on. But we're going to do some portraits. And I've got a willing volunteer. And I believe he did actually volunteer. Where are Damien? Damien, there you go. Let's give Damien a round of applause. <laughs> Hi, Damien. Thank you very much for joining me. Damien is a professional model who just happens to work at Adorama. Is that right? No, that's not right, is it? <laughs> but you do happen to work at Adorama. See, you come to Adorama and you get to meet people like Damien. What a cool thing that is. So, uh, so Damien is, uh, is uh, literally volunteered to do this. And uh, that, that's really brave, I have to say. Th there's a reason I'm a photographer and not a model. That's the several reasons I'm not a model, but <laughs> one of the reasons for being a photographer is I like to be this side of the camera so no one points the camera at me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Damien here is, is uh, bravely volunteered, so that's always good. So what we're going to start off with, uh, and I split this roughly into three parts. We're going to start with ETTL or, or TTL flash versus manual flash. And I'll show you a few differences and, and uh, which way I prefer to go. Uh, and then in the next bit, we're going to look at hard lighting. So hard, uh, angular, dramatic lighting. And then we're going to finish off with soft lighting. So I've split it into three, but they're not equal parts. They are just little rough bits. OK, so let's start with uh, the, the easiest way to use flash. The easiest way to use a speed light is to stick it on top of your camera. That's what they're designed to do. They're designed to go on your camera and communicate with your camera, and that's where all of the expensive electronics and money goes. It goes into the making your camera and your flash talk to each other. So in Canon, because I'm a Canon shooter, I'm shooting with ETTL mode, through the lens. Nikon, you've got your own version, you've got ITTL, and other manufacturers have their own versions. And the, the advantage of this is it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like program mode on your camera. So it's a little bit like just saying, well, OK, Flash, you do the work. You tell me what I've got to do, and I'll, I'll just get on with taking the pictures. And that's just brilliant, because it does away with the, the complications, the hard bits, and it does that for you. Now, a few things you need to know. My camera body, it's going to be set to manual. Whenever I'm shooting Flash, it's one of the very few times I shoot in manual mode only. If you shoot in aperture priority or shutter priority, it assumes that your flash gun is secondary. It'll add fill light. We don't want that. We want the flash to be the only light the camera sees. And if I work in manual, that's exactly what will happen. Let me show you. So let's come out of that, because you're going to need to see what's going on. We'll close Photoshop down. I'm, I'm tethered into Lightroom. So the idea is, if I take a picture, it should come onto the screen. But only if I happen to start tethered capture. That he helps, doesn't it? Okay, so we'll just turn that bit on. Uh -huh. Tethered capture, start tethered capture. There we go. Lovely. So you should see what I see shortly after I take the picture. So using manual mode, I'm going to set my flash shutter speed. And it's going to go to the sync speed of my camera or just below. Now, if you don't know what the sync speed of your camera is, 
There's some brilliant videos on Adorama TV. Go check them out, and it'll explain it all. But basically, it's in your manual, and it's the recommended fastest shutter speed your camera can work at with flash before you turn on the clever electronic wizardry. In my case, I'm working at a 200th of a second. That isn't going to change for the next 90 minutes at all. So that's easy. Everything else is going to change, though. So my ISO, I'm starting on 200 ISO. Eh, that's a good place to start. And my aperture. Now, this is where it gets fun, because I'm going to choose f4. Nice shallow depth of field. OK, so we're going to come and take a picture here of Damien. I'm going to stand in front of the screen, but hopefully that won't ruin things too much. Um, we're just going to take a picture. And my camera and my flash talk to each other. And my camera says, OK, we want to get a picture that's correctly exposed at f4. And my flash will say, well, at f4, I need to produce this amount of light to make it happen. And we get a picture. It's perfectly well exposed. You can see the, the camera data along the top. F4, 200th of a second, ISO 200. Now, if you're a wedding photographer or an event photographer, you're likely to be working in this exact setup with your flash directly on your camera. Brilliant. If you're doing this sort of work and you're a wedding photographer and you've got F4, what happens? Well, if you're photographing the bride, then the groom turns up and the groom's mates. You don't want F4 anymore. You want F11, bigger depth of field, to get them all in focus. So I'm going to change my depth of field by changing my aperture to f11. OK, so we come and take the same shot, or at least as close as I can. So that's f4. And the next picture, doo -doo -doo, here it comes, is f11. It's exactly the same. So what the camera did was it said, oh, OK, you want f11. That's three stops more light. I'll produce more light from the flash. Bingo. It works. And that's where this system really, really wins. You tell the camera what you want, and the flash makes it happen. It's that easy. You want F4? It'll do F4. You want F11? It'll do F11. If you go too far, it will eventually run out of flash, and you'll, you, you won't get enough light. Um, but from one flash, you'll be surprised how far you can push things. And that's why I love it. So when I used to do weddings, that's exactly what I did. I used to dial in whatever aperture I needed, and it would work. It's just genius. So, so that's kind of fun and great, but what do we all know about on-camera flash? It's horrible. It's horrible light. It's the worst kind of light you can have. It's the massively convenient sort of light. It works. But from an artistic point of view, it's not good. And if you think that's bad, watch this. What we're going to do is do the same shot, but this time I'm going to take it in portrait upright format. Here we go. And I warn you now, Damien, this is going to be the worst picture of you ever. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because we've got another 90 minutes to go, so <laughs> the potential for worse shots is, is highly increased. Uh, but what I've done this time is I've just turned the camera on the side, and you can see the shadow. Let's, let's do a wider shot because then we'll really be able where that shadow goes. Okay. Oh, God, please don't look at the screen, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sums it up, though, really, doesn't it? That's, that's it. I mean, that is your, your drunk at the bar shot. <laughs> so the flash has come off my camera. And because the flash is in the same direction as the lens, there's a shadow, but there's that slight gap. And when you turn your camera on the side, the slight gap gives you a shadow just off to the left or the right-hand side, depending whether you tilt your camera one way or the other. Now, I always find it fascinating as photographers. We, we, both, we tilt our cameras different ways. We're, we don't have a, a one way or another. It's a bit like being left and right-handed. It's really weird. Um, so on-camera flash is great, but it really does have its limitations. So the best thing you can do with your flash is get it off the camera as soon as possible. OK, so you can get your camera and your flash separated incredibly easily these days. Nikon, Canon, Pentax, Sony, all of the camera manufacturers have gone into making this so easy to do that it's no harder than doing a picture with it on camera now. So I'm just going to pop this onto my little cold shoe. 
And I highly recommend this. This is a Frio cold shoe. And uh, this is about the cheapest bit of equipment I've ever bought. But it's saved my camera and my flash so many times because it won't fall off. Not saying that I don't forget to tighten up my equipment and I don't love it and respect it and take great care with it, but accidents happen. So uh, I popped it on my little cold shoe and that's going to be great. It's still in ETTL. The flash is still in the through the lens. It's still going to do all the clever mathematics, but it's no longer attached. Okay, so to trigger this, you're going to need some sort of magic. And the magic is hidden in this little pop-up flash. So almost all the camera manufacturers now have the pop-up flashes that can control your big flashes here. And if you don't have one of those, you can look at Pocket Wizard. They'll do you something along the same lines as well, and other manufacturers are available. These things make life so much easier. So what you're going to see, or at least you're probably not going to see it so much, but Damien will, is this little flash will fire. The little flash will fire, but all it's going to do is just trigger the big flash. It's just saying to the big flash, go, fire, flash, and then the flash will do the work. So that's the idea. <laughs> it actually works. Hold on. Here we go. So same thing again. Here we go. So we're going to take a shot. Bang, like that. And it works. Well, it will. It's coming. Here it comes. Yeah, it worked. The flash fired, it kind of worked, but it kind of doesn't. And this is where I slowly, slowly lose faith with the ETTL system from Canon and the ITTL from Nikon, although I think the, the Nikon system is fractionally better. Don't, don't tell anyone from Canon, I'm sorry, Moses. Don't <laughs> <laughs> but but th there are slight advantages to some of the systems over others. Uh, and it's, it's just a touch overexposed, in my opinion. But that's not why I don't use ETTL. I don't use ETTL, whether it's on camera or off camera, because if I then come and take another shot, let's do this one, where we're going to deliberately put the background in the picture, the ETTL system, the ITTL system, is very intelligent and very stupid. It's intelligent because it does wonders, but it's, it's stupid because it doesn't know what's important to my picture. So I would want Damien's skin tones to be exactly the same shot after shot after shot. That won't happen with ETTL or ITTL. Any little changes and it can change the metering system and it'll get confused. So if you want consistency, you want to go into manual flash. If you're running and gunning, if you're a photographer that is doing weddings or events and you're moving and things are changing, stick to the ETTL system. It's brilliant. But for us here, Damien's not going fast. I don't know, how fast can you run? I can probably keep up, but I'm <laughs> not very fast. Okay, that's good for me. So <laughs> he's not going to move very fast, so I'm going to switch from ETTL to M for manual. And all I'm doing is I'm pressing a button on the back of the, the flash. On the speed light, it now says M for manual. The difference is I now tell the flash myself how bright or how much light it needs to produce. So let's guess. How wrong can I be? Ah. So all I'm going to do is say produce half your flash power. So whatever your maximum is, I want half. And I'll take a picture. Here we go. We'll come and do the same shot again. Okay, so let's have a little look at this. See what you think. Boom, boom, boom. What do you reckon? Don't say that's an improvement. <laughs> too bright? Okay, so we can safely say half power is too bright. So we can do a few things. We could say, well, we can change the flash so it doesn't produce half power, but it produces less. Or I could say to the camera, change the ISO from 200 to 100, so it's less sensitive to light. Or I could change the aperture so it's smaller and less light comes through. So there's three ways of making less light. Turn down the flash, lower the ISO sensitivity, close down the aperture. Which one's the right way to do it? All of them. 
they're all right, fine. I mean, they all have their uses. And you'll see me this afternoon do all three of those things. And I'll do it depending on the circumstances in which I'm shooting, and you'll see them change. So for now, I'm going to say, OK, I don't want half power. I want, I don't know, well, let's see. A quarter power would be one stop less light. An eighth power would be two stops less light. A sixteenth power, that would be three stops less light. So let's try that. Three stops. OK, we'll make sure it's pointing at Damien. And we'll come in and take the sh Here we go. Ooh. OK, so three stops less light. Pretty close, yeah? Almost bang on. It may just want a little bit more, so I can do half stops and third stops, or I could just tweak the ISO to get things right. So I'm going to say we're on F8. Let's go for F6.3. OK, so I can change my aperture, and that will make a, a bigger hole and a little bit more light come through. So however you want to do it, it's all good. You can change things any way you like to get the shot that you want. So the, the idea with manual is it's always the same. Right or wrong, it's always the same. The beauty of that is even if you're slightly adrift, if you need to fix it in Photoshop and you do 100 pictures all slightly wrong, you only have to do one and then Lightroom will repeat the process. So working in manual takes longer here by a few seconds but a lot less time inside of your computer. So does anyone want to spend more time processing their pictures? Please, I want to do more processing, yes. If you do, stick to the TTL flash. If you want to spend less time, master the, the manual flash. That's kind of how it works. OK, so are there any questions at this point? I'm afraid we can only do them from the audience. If you're on the internet, you're out of luck. But there's none from the audience either, so that's even easier. <laughs> Good-o. So that kind of works quite well. And um, one thing we missed, and I'm going to redo, is an alternative way of using on-camera flash. Because we got it off-camera, and I, I missed a bit, so I'm going to just jump backwards slightly. Because we can bounce the flash. You all heard about bouncing? You th these things not only shoot forwards, but they also shoot up and to the sides. OK, so. Let's just roll backwards into the TTL system. I'll just switch it on. There we go. Boom. And I'll remind you about how bad this really is. OK, so that's on camera. But remember, you can bounce. So if you're lucky, like I am here, and we have a nice low white ceiling, I can bounce my flash off the ceiling. And look at the difference in this shot. Better, OK? It could do with a little bit more exposure, but that's ETTL in, in action. But it's better. There's no nasty shadows. There is a shadow. There is a very good shadow, but it's down at uh, Damien's feet, so we can't see it. Now, back in the day when I did weddings, one thing you could be sure of is the venue you were working at would have a really high, really dark ceiling. Got any wedding photographers in? Anybody do that sort of shots? Yeah, if you, you probably know what I mean. You end up in, in all sorts of random places. So if you don't have a nice white ceiling to bounce it off of, you can bounce it off of a wall. So I can bounce this off the wall. We've got a, a nice white wall. Well, it's a, it's a screen, isn't it, really? So we can bounce it off the wall there. And we'll get quite a nice little shot by bouncing it off the wall. OK, that, that works quite nicely. What if you don't have a wall? What if you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere with no ceilings and no walls? Uh, Gabby, can I borrow you a second? Because every photographer should have one of these. Not a Gabby. I mean, they are useful. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to ask if you're available from the Adorama store. <laughs> Adorama rentals, maybe, but yeah. <laughs> but does that not mean the same thing in, the, in America? Uh, see, that's uh, lost in translation. Okay, hop, 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 come on, up you come. Brilliant. So <laughs> what we're going to do is use a reflector. Now, you can't see it, but on this side, there's a shiny side. Would you like to show the ladies and gentlemen of the internet the shiny side? There it is. So we have a shiny side, and that can be used as a reflector. 
to reflect my flash. So we can come in here. So rather than pointing my flash directly at your subject, you're going to point it directly at the reflector. Let me get this in. And what we'll get, hopefully, is a great little shot of Damien. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thank you very much. You are excused. <laughs> Not you, Damien. Stay where you are. And that works quite well. So you can bounce the flash off anything that is reflective, be it a white ceiling, a white wall, or a silver reflector. Okay? And what we've done there is no more different than getting the camera off the, the, the flash uh, separated. We've just changed that angle of light from direct to an angle that's off camera. And that's kind of key, trying to get rid of that angular light so that it doesn't exactly match your lens. Right, okay, so any questions at all? Let me just stop and see how we're going. Oh, we're good, okay. So let's pop that back on there. So lighting comes in a few different types. Uh, the main two types are hard light and soft light. And this is nothing to do with flash. You've experienced hard light and soft light already in your photography. So normally when we're taking pictures, the light source is the sun. Yeah? And that comes as a sunny day. Remember those? <laughs> when it wasn't snowing? <laughs> so a sunny day when you've got the, the blue sky and the sun in the sky, you get shadows. And your shadows are hard, angular, straight-edged shadows. That's hard lighting. On a cloudy day, your shadows become all soft and edgy and fluffy, and, and sometimes you don't get any shadows at all. And that's soft lighting. So hard and soft are, are things that we experience all the time as photographers. But with flash, you are controlling the sun. This is the sun. You are a god of light. You take complete control over this and you make it do what you want. You bend it to your will. But at the moment, it's a very small light source. So with a small light source, what do you get? You get, well pretty small light, it's hard light. So hard light, let me show you the difference and why you would define hard light. So again, we're gonna come and take a little picture of you. Here we go, Ooh, pop my flash up. <laughs> Nobody noticed that one. So hard light in portraits is generally considered a bad thing. And hard light is all about the edge of the shadow. Anywhere where you see a shadow and you suddenly see a join between shadow and bright areas, if you've got a hard line, that's hard light. And not only does hard light give you hard shadows where the nose comes down, but every little pore on your skin will cast a slight shadow. And if you're photographing skin or you want people to have lovely looking skin, hard light can be a problem. And we'll look at soft light later on. We'll look at but, but you can still do, sorry, we're, we're losing this signal, there we go. Uh, you can still do great shots with hard light. Now, I need a, a, an assistant. Gabby, could I ask you to give me a hand? Sorry, Damien, if you want to hop up, because we're going to reverse the background. Thank you. Round we go. Boing. Thank you very much. So why have I reversed the, black, the, the background to black from white? Uh, well, if you're starting out doing this, white backgrounds are great, but black backgrounds are so much easier to work with. So if you're starting at this, go with a, uh, a black background, because the shadows that would be falling behind, if they're falling on a black background, black shadows, black background, you can figure that out, can't you? Yeah, it makes sense. So that's what we're going to shoot against. Now. When I'm working in manual, I can ex uh, establish my exposure. So let's go back into manual. Ooh, there we go. And we reckon about a sixteenth power, more or less. Let's come in here. Yeah, that's kind of about right. On my histogram, that looks pretty good. OK, and that gives me a nice kind of uh, deep shadow and a nice little shot. However, if you change the light uh, distance, if you change the distance, from the light to the subject, you'd have to re-meter. But if you keep the distance the same, you don't. So rather than having the light there, I can put the light on that side. It's still the same distance away from Damien. So when I take the shot, the lighting will be essentially the same. 
We'll wait patiently for it to come up. Just lit from the other side. And we can keep moving the light around, and as long as it's roughly the same distance, the exposure will be the same. So we'll come in here. Oops. Here we go. And as we move around, we get a different shot. And normally, if you're photographing using the sunlight, you've got to wait. You've got to wait until the time of day changes when your light goes round. But when you're shooting with flash, you don't wait. You're in control. You make the magic happen. We can even go right back here. That's about as far as I can go without falling off the stage. Wouldn't want to fall off the stage live on the internet. That could, <laughs> could go viral. Okay, so if I move the light right around here, so it's right from behind, we still have the same exposure. We've lit a much smaller part of the, the face. Now, you might be thinking, that's, that's not a great shot. But light is all about controlling the direction and what you choose to light and what you choose to leave in shadow. So we can make this better by simply moving Damien a little bit. Damien, you don't... You, you, you stay there, and all I want you to do is face out. Okay, you can just face out. There we go. That's brilliant stuff. I know. They look gorgeous, don't they? <laughs> okay, if you can just turn a little bit more around that way. There you go. Fabulous. Okay. So what we've done is, from my point of view, we've now moved Damien onto a, a profile, a side-on shot. And if I just move my light a little bit more this way, there we go. And once again, if you can just keep looking out at the ladies and gentlemen there, lovely. And I want to go down. Always the way as photographers, we're never happy. Something in the middle. Tiny little bit there. And one more. Yes, there we go. So I moved it a little bit too far from my personal taste. I wanted a bit more shadow coming across. So I just moved it a little bit. There we go. And we get a nice profile shot. We get the eyes lit, the nose lit. And because we're in Lightroom here, we can just jump into Lightroom and do a tiny, tiny little bit of adjusting. I'm just going to come down to my saturation and drop it down to black and white. Black and white portraits are, are more powerful sometimes, particularly with a, a strong black background. Now, just looking over at your screen than mine, we might want to just pull the highlights down just a tiny little bit. But there we go. That is a very simple, powerful portrait. Let's just pop that bigger. There we go. That's it. That's really simple to do. One light, hard light, profile picture. You can do that. It's as easy as that. Any questions at all? Lovely. I'll just keep on going. Um, so that kind of works really well, but we can, we can get a little bit more dramatic with the lighting than that. So what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to annoy the video guys because I'm going to move. And as I've just spent the last five minutes changing the lighting, <laughs> I do like messing things up. So I'm going to grab my light. And I'm going to put it somewhere where I can get a bigger stretch of background. And I'm going to put it over here. So we're going to cross. I'll be back for you in a minute. Don't you move. Okay, let's make sure we're not hooked up to anything. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> okay, so what I've done is I've just put my light over here. We've got a nice big blank wall. So you guys over there, trust me, it's here. I can promise you, you're, you're welcome to move. Because we'll be here for a minute or two. And I'm just going to angle my light down. So it lights the wall. Uh -huh, there we go. And I'll grab my camera, see exactly what's going on. Hang on. See, I figured that one out. I've got to go back now. Hang on. <laughs> Okay, so that's as far as I can stretch it. So I'm just going to take a shot without Damien in, just so you can see what's going to happen. And it's really dark, so my poor camera is just trying to focus up, but it'll get there. And the picture will come on screen in just a second. 
Okay, so there we go. So what you can see is a wash of light coming down the wall. And into that wash of light, we're going to put Damien in just a moment. But the great thing about the flashes is not only can you change their power, change their, their TTL or manual, but you can zoom them. If you've got one of these speed lights, you know you've got a zoom option on it. So at the moment, it's on. Actually, I don't know what it's on. Let's have a look. It's on 24 millimeters. Now, a 24 millimeter lens is a wide angle lens. And what the flash is trying to do is recreate a light big enough to fill a 24 millimeter lens. But what I've now done is I've said zoom to 105 millimeters. So now it's going to produce a beam of light that would be big enough for a 105 millimeter lens. And it'll look like that. As you can see, uh, that's the 24, that's the 105. See the difference in the beam of light? And because I've got it right up against the wall, we should be able to see some texture in there as well. So what looks like a nice smooth wall actually has some, some texture in there. So that, that's kind of really handy. Now, what we need is a model, isn't it? So come on, in three you come. So all I'm going to do is just get Damien just to, to lean against the wall. So if you can just lean right up against that wall. I'll grab my camera and we'll take a picture. So if you can look at the camera for me. Okay. Brilliant. So first thing I need to do is establish an exposure. Because my exposure is going to change because I've moved the distance between the light and the subject. And to me, that looks just a little bit on the bright side. Just a little bit. So it's on, actually, I don't know what power, 16th? I could go up there and change the power of the light. Now, I'm tall. I'm six foot six tall. <laughs> what? It's the internet. They don't know. <laughs> don't tell them. I mean, Damien's nearly seven foot. <laughs> So between us, we could reach, no problem. But if you're short, then going up there and changing the power can be a right pain. So here's a nice little tip. Rather than changing the power of the flash and saying, I want less light from the flash, let's just close down the aperture. So the aperture is 6.3 at the moment. So I'm going to dial it down. Let's go F11. F11. On F11, we get a picture that looks on my camera pretty good. Let's have a look on there. Yeah, that looks all right, doesn't it? Okay, so, so now we're getting something really moody. But have a look at Damien's face. Can you see in that photograph how one side is lit and one side is in shadow? That's because the light's coming from the side. It's coming from 90 degrees. So how are we going to do that? I mean, we could get a second light. And we could add a second light source in. That would work, wouldn't it? But then this talk wouldn't be just one light. <laughs> it would be just one light plus, oh, go and buy another one too, which is good. Adorama would love you to do that, and you can get $20 off. But there's an easier solution, and here's the easiest solution. Right, Damien, can you look up towards the light for me? But don't look at the light. Just look off to the left-hand side, because it really, really hurts when you look at the light. Trust me. Okay, and we'll take the same shot. I'll wait for that to come on screen. Okay, so there we go. Look at the difference. Look at the eyes now. Can you see how the eyes uh, are looking up at the light and how much more dramatic that is, how much more exciting that is? Where before it was half and half, now we have a really powerful light. One light coming from above, lighting the face, giving a fantastic result. Got to love how simple that is. It's just a single light zoomed in. Now, have we got any questions, or can I keep on going? Yes. Nope, we're good. Okay. So that kind of works really well. Now, uh, oh, hello, we've lost our background. We're going to need that. I'll tell you what, actually, Gabby, whilst you're there, can we just turn this around so we get the white side? Uh-huh, around we go. Is it going to flip over?
Ah, I think it might have just got itself caught up, but we'll... These pop-up backgrounds are great, aren't they? <laughs> they are really good, but when they get themselves doubled round, uh, it can be a, a little bit of a, a pain to get them back in. In fact, one of the, the best skills you can learn as a photographer is how to fold up a background in front of a client. It's not easy, and, or a reflector. One of my most popular videos early on on YouTube was how to fold a reflector. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, would you? Uh, right, let's go and get a, a flash. Stay there. I'll grab. Okay, so we've changed the shape of the lights by zooming in. But these lights can produce all sorts of different shapes. And not a lot of people realize what shape the light is from a flash gun or a speed light. So what we're going to do is grab a shot like this. And I'm just going to take a picture of the shape of the light. Okay, so this isn't supposed to be an interesting picture. It's more sort of educational. Let's just turn that down so you can see it. Here we go. So the standard shape, <coughs> excuse me, standard shape of light is sort of rectangular. Okay, so, and that makes sense, because what shape is the, the flash head? Hmm. So what would you expect? Obviously, a rectangular shape of light comes out of a rectangular light source. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can modify the light. You can change and shape it. And you can change and shape it using a few tools. Now, I've got one of these little things. This is a, uh, a rogue flash bender. These are great. Bender. <laughs> Can't say that in England. <laughs> you see, I get in trouble for saying things in, the, in America. <laughs> oh, it's being streamed, isn't it? Whoops. <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind. Uh, the Rogue Flash Bender is a, is a great name. <laughs> Makes me smile. Um, and it works really well for uh, various things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it up. And I'm going to roll it up into a little tube. And we're going to turn it into what's known as a snoot. Now, a snoot is simply a tube for the light to go down. And this tube will allow me to change the, the shape of light from a rectangle to a circle. And these are great. Now, before I bought one of these, I used to use a piece of black card and stick it on the end of my, my flash and hope that it would be a riot and it gets squashed and damaged. Uh, this is just brilliant. They are inexpensive for something on your camera anyway, because uh, they can get quite pricey, but these are really good for what they do. And what they do is they turn the shape of your light from a circle, uh, sorry, a rectangle, let's go even wider, into a circle. And you can shape your light into a more circular pattern of light, there we go, to give a very different look and feel to your light source that you're producing. So, all we need to do is make use of that. Okay, so let's go back over to Damien. You're not sitting too comfortably there, are you? Okay, so light over here. I'm just going to tie up my shoelace before I trip and fall. I'm determined to fall over on the internet. <laughs> it's clearly something I've been looking for. Right, so there we go. So, uh, Damien, well, actually, you've got a chair. Have a seat for me. Put up the chair. We'll make use of that. The everyday things that we find, that'll do. And we'll pop that in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the circle of light to, to light you. I feel a song coming on, the circle of light. It's close, isn't it? Uh, and we'll, we'll get a, a shot like that. So I need a camera. Anyone see my camera? A little tip for Canon. Make your cameras orange. So much easier to find in the studio. Beeping, so it beeps. That would be useful too. Okay, so everything's changed. The, the lights changed, the distance changed. I need to rework out what I'm going to be shooting at. So here we go. Let's take a test shot and see how we go. 
Okay, brace yourself. What do you reckon, yeah? It is, it is the best picture I've done. Who's, yeah, this is the best. <laughs> it's not the best picture I've done so far. So that's not good. Clearly, there's not enough light reaching Damien. So what are we going to do? We can change all sorts of things. We could change the flash power. We could open up the aperture. And we're on the F20. I've, I've dialed it down really low. So we're definitely going to open up the aperture. Let's open it up to F8, which is a much more sensible aperture to be working at. Okay, here we go. So this should give us a better picture. Getting there, but what have I done? I've missed Damien with the light. The problem with snoots is just a, a tiny little movement one way or another, and it, it kind of misses the, the thing you're shooting. So you've got to watch out for that. It's still a little bit dark as well, so I'm going to increase my flash power, because I don't want to go any more than F8, but I can go because I can reach it Let's go to a quarter power, so that's two more stops. Yes, we're getting there. We're getting there, aren't we? That looks pretty good. That's not bad at all. So I think we can just move the light a little bit to the side, keeping the distance the same so I don't have to change my exposure. And that should give me a nice little circle of light just over Damien and give me a very dramatic shot by controlling where it's light and where it's dark and even the shadow. Now, we don't like shadows in photography. At least we say we don't, but I think the shadow works really, really well. So it's staying. Okay, once again, any questions at all? Right, so that kind of works very, very nicely. And I'm happy with that. But we can modify it even further. I need my flashback. And what I'll do is I'll show you my very, very expensive, custom-made piece of equipment. Here it is. All the way from the United Kingdom, imported especially for this event, is a piece of brown paper with some slots cut in it. It's nothing but the best for Adorama. And what I'm going to do with that is attach it to the front of my snoot. Okay, so we'll just put a little elastic band around there. Whoop, I lost my elastic band. There we go. And we'll attach this into the front. And we have to put it the right way up so it gives the effect that I want. But it is reversible. It can do two directions. <laughs> and we'll pop that just there. And we'll grab my flash. And we'll just take a shot. So I'll show you the shape that we get from this. And you probably don't need me to tell you what shape it's going to be. You can probably figure it out. So it gives that sort of grid effect, or a Venetian blind effect. So that's what we're going to use. Use that to, to create a picture. So let's go put this back in front of Damien. This will be the last one over here. You'll be glad to know. Then we'll move back to the front. <laughs> right, so Damien, if you want to stand up. Thank you very much. And we'll lose the chair. Yes. I think you've had it too easy, so we'll get you standing up again for a bit. Okay, and we're going to run this really high. So we're going to put it a little bit like the shot we did earlier, where I'm going to run it really high against the wall, and we'll angle it down. Okay, something like that. And we'll try and guess where it's going to go so it actually reaches Damien and doesn't light his knees. Okay, and we'll grab a camera. Okay, so once again, I'm going to have to establish an exposure. So let's take a test shot. First shot is going to be a test shot. It's pretty good, I think. Hold on. Look at that. Now that's good. 
That works really well. Oh, look at that light. <laughs> okay, that works really well, but uh, uh, I reckon we could go a little higher. Let's push it back a little bit. We'll run it a tiny bit higher. And of course, by moving the light back and higher, I'm changing the exposure. I'm saying the light's further away, so I need to modify it. So I'm just going to increase my aperture, open it up a little bit, just two-thirds of a stop. And I could do a trial and error, but it just makes sense, doesn't it? If you push the light further away, you need more light to reach your subject. Okay, so Damien, what I'd like you to do is just look up again towards the light, but just at the side. That's fantastic. Brilliant. Here it comes. And can you look just a little bit higher for me? That's the way. And once that's going, I can come in here and I can move to the side. There we go. And again, look at the camera this time. That's it. Well done. Now I can move around and I can still get exactly the same exposure. It's still right. Doesn't matter if you move with your camera, as long as the distance between your subject and your flash stays exactly the same, your exposure will be exactly the same. You can walk all around the room, it won't make any difference. So let's come in here again. Okay, and we'll go wide. Beautiful. That's really good. Okay, so this time, one last one, Damien. Can you just look towards the wall just over there? That's it. What's the, the photographer's favorite saying? Last one, just one more. <coughs> Fabulous, yeah, that's really nice. Here it comes. Look at that. One light, that's all we need. It helps to have more, but you can start with one light. A lot of people ask me, how many lights should I have? Thank you, Damon, you can, uh, do you wanna go and have a seat on the stage again for me? How many lights should I have? You need as many lights as you need to get the shot done, but start with one. Learn one, discover, explain out what it can do, and make the most of one light before you start adding more. Don't try and run before you can walk. Okay, let's just close this off. It's far away. Okay, that's a really good question. I'll repeat it so those at home can hear. So am I aiming the light at the wall or am I aiming it directly at Damien? Now, have a look at the texture. Can you see this gorgeous texture that's coming through? The light is aimed almost straight down the wall. So as far as the, the shot goes, the wall is pretty much here, right in front of the camera, uh, right in front of the flash, and it is literally parallel to the flash because the light will spread out to the sides. So the further away you go, the more directional it becomes. It doesn't spread too much with this thing on, but it spreads enough. So to make life easier, you just kind of run it parallel to the wall, and it just works. And the more parallel to the wall, the more texture from the, the wall or the surface that you can actually pull out. Now here we've got some fantastic textures. There's some, some beautiful grimy walls around us. But even on what we would consider a smooth, well-made wall, the result is absolutely brilliant. I really love that. I think that's a good shot. Yes, far away. Yes, I do, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is, um, if you don't want the shadows, can you, can you get rid of them using, uh, moving the, the subject, you mean, for example? Yeah, so if I move the subject, if, if we move Damien forward, he wouldn't cast a shadow on the wall, but he might step out of the light, and that could be a bit of a problem. So we'd have to work that very, very carefully to make sure that either doesn't happen, or that's when you start thinking about secondary light sources. So you might then have to move into the realms of uh, lighting the shadow area or lighting the background separately and the subject separately. So you can go so far with one flash, but eventually you hit that point, and that's when you think, I'm, I probably should go to Outer Armour and buy another flash. So, yeah. Bearing in mind, these shots we're using, these are with 
no TTL, no clever electronics. This is just the flash going flash. So you could go and buy one of the flash point lights that just goes flash. It doesn't do the, the fancy electronics as a secondary light. Yeah, far away. That is a fantastic question. Okay, so the question is, they changed the lights. They actually managed to turn the lights on. Well done, guys at the back. Thank you very much. <laughs> they did well, but it didn't change the shot. It didn't at all, did it? Not at all. So let me show you why. Let's just pull this up, and we'll show you exactly why that's happening. So anyone seen my camera? You see? Okay, let's go grab that. My wife is still watching, but she'll, she'll know what I'm going through every single time. Whenever I'm working in the studio and I put my camera down, the very next question is, where's my camera? <laughs> Honestly, I, I must get through more cameras by losing them than anything else. Uh, so let's put a shot in here, and we'll switch back for the sake of speed and convenience, the speed and convenience mode, ETTL, okay? And we'll take a picture with ETTL. Here we go. Fabulous. And, uh, oh boy, that's bad. Actually, not quite sure what happened there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've managed to nudge my, my flash exposure compensation. Whoopsie daisy. <coughs> there we go. We'll try that again just to prove it does work. Yes, there we go. Somehow I dialed in one and a half stops of extra flash on ETTL. That's a whole other talk. Okay, that's great. But what happens if you forget to pop up your flash? Okay, you don't have the little trigger. So now the, the flash has no way of knowing. And I'm standing under some pretty bright lights here. Here we go. What does the camera see? Not quite, because we're under some really bright lights, but almost nothing at all. There it is. You can just see something there. So without the flash, there is no picture. No flash, no picture. It's the flash that is the only thing that the camera is seeing. And the reason that's happening is because of the settings at the top. 200th of a second. The flash is, uh, so the, the, uh, the shutter speed is so fast that it's much, much faster than the light uh, that we can see in here. The aperture is such that it's not open enough to see the light in here. So we could drop the shutter speed down. If we dropped it down to a tenth of a second, twentieth of a second, it would pick up more of the ambient light and that would affect the picture. Gabby, are you right? We have, a from the internet. we have a question from the internet. I didn't think we were getting questions from the internet. Okay, off, far away. That's a very good question. So, I'll, shall I repeat that for the rest of the internet? Okay, so. When I'm using my pop-up flash, the question is, when I'm using the pop-up flash, this is producing a little bit of light, but does it influence the final shot? The answer to that one is yes and no. Okay, any other questions at all? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, okay. Uh, so I should elaborate. That's not fair, is it? So, uh, yes, internet. Yes, it is. I don't know who on the internet, but uh, thank you very much. Um, it is very, very slight. Now, don't quote me on this. I'm not a technical expert from Canon, but I think it produces about a 30-second power from a very tiny flash. It's very, very small amount of light. It's enough for this to be able to see it, but it's so tiny compared to what this produces that it doesn't actually get seen. However, if this is on a very low power already, then it will add a little bit of light, and it can rather ruin things slightly, but it has to be on its like absolute minimum power. Similarly, if you're photographing glass, if you're photographing through a fish tank, this would reflect back off the fish tank, even if this is off camera somewhere. So uh, internet, hopefully that answers your question. And if you want to go and check out Adorama on the Adorama Learning Center, around about Christmas time, I did a, a video on exactly that. So go check it out. Okay, so the, your question is, yeah, so when I'm using the, the pop-up flash, it casts a shadow. And you're absolutely right. If I was only using this as my only source of light, so not the big flash, let's see if we can get it to work. Long time since I've done this. Oh, no, I can't get it to work. See, I'm rubbish at this. Oh, that's because it's turned on as a, <laughs> it's turned on as a, a master. 
So <laughs> with that in mind, yes, it would. The, if you're only using this, it will cast a shadow in your picture. But this isn't being seen. It's only to communicate. So if this is your only source of light, take your lens hood off. But if it is your only source of light, it's not something I would recommend. Let's put it that way. It's great as a communication light, but not as an actual uh, light to add anything to the shot. Okay, brilliant. So we've done a, a couple of shots there with hard lighting. Now, every shot we've taken is hard light. We've got shadows and hard light. Look at this sh shadow coming down here. You can see how that is hard light. The shadow on the nose, very, very defined. But what we're going to do now is we're going to soften it up. We're going to have softer light rather than hard light. Mm. But what we need to do is reverse this background around. So, uh, Damien, if I can ask you to step out. Thank you very much. And if I can just ask one of my brave volunteers to come and give me a hand reversing this round. Oh. <laughs> Damien, it's not supposed to be us. Dude. We're paying people to do that. I swear, aren't we? <laughs> God, honestly, you wouldn't see Joe McNally doing this. I swear, you actually would. He's very hands-on. <laughs> there we go. Fabulous. Okay, good stuff. Uh, so I've got back to my black background because I just prefer that. It's just my, my nice comfort zone when I'm doing one light shots. We want to get rid of uh, the, the rogue flash bender. That's done its job. But what we're going to do is make the light softer. So let's go back to our analogy where we had the, the, the sun in the sky and a cloudy day. The sun in the sky on its own, that's the hard light with the hard shadows. The cloudy day, that's the soft light. What's the difference? It's the size. The size of the light source. The sun on its own is about, it's about that big, isn't it? It's tiny. In the UK, it's even smaller, I swear. We, we get so little sun. Um, so, so that's kind of small. But then you get the cloud, and the size of your sun becomes the size of the cloud. That's a big light source, and that's what soft light is. Soft light is a big light source relative to the size of the subject. So if you're photographing ants, that's a big light source. If you're photographing Damien, who's seven foot tall, remember, that's a small light source. Okay? Seven foot or seven foot two? Seven, one and a half. Uh, whoops, eh? yeah, be close. So to make that light source bigger, what we need to do is we need to use something to make it larger. That something can be all sorts of some things. There's a never-ending list of some things. But if you want something to start off with, grab yourself one of these. This is about as simple as it gets. This is just an umbrella. Anybody superstitious? If you're superstitious, get a softbox. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, it, we can get the, uh, the softbox if you prefer, but just as one single thing to use. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I will hit you with this, I promise, eventually. I'll try not to. Uh, this is just absolutely ideal. So the idea with this is that what we end up with is a light source that's gone from small to really big. And the bigger the light source, the more areas that it illuminates, the more shadows that it fills in, and the softer the light becomes. Now these things come in a couple of flavors. The, the shoot through variety, this is shoot through. And then there's the silver reflected variety. And I like to use these. This is my preferred one. Which oh, cool. <laughs> oh, no, I'm back. <laughs> I'll just hide behind here, and then it, it could be anything, couldn't it? That's great. So I prefer the shoot-through variety because I can get it closer to my subject, and the closeness of the light is really what makes the difference. Okay, so let's put this back into manual mode for my flash, because I moved it earlier. I've got the zoom setting, and this is important. I've got the zoom as wide as it'll go. I want as much of this umbrella to be lit by the soft box, uh, by the flash, rather, uh, because we don't have a soft box. It's not going to bounce around. I want as much of the surface to be lit for the maximum softness of light. And then, well, you put it anywhere you like. 
So there's a few places that are classic portrait places. Number one is known as the Rembrandt lighting. Heard of that? I'm not sure Rembrandt did, <laughs> according to my dad. I don't think he's, he's a painter. Uh, not Rembrandt, my dad. Actually, Rembrandt was a painter as well. But, but uh, yeah, Rembrandt lighting is a light pattern that we, we use a lot in the studio. It is the classic first learning principle of lighting, and it works really well, so it is a great one to learn. It works really simply. What you do is you get your light, and you put it pretty much as high as you can get it, about 45 degree angle from your subject, and you push it about 45 degrees to the side, so something like that. Okay, and that is your classic Rembrandt position. We need to establish the exposure. So let's just come in here and take a test shot. We'll choose F8, because it doesn't matter. Depth of field is good at F8. And have a little look at this. <laughs> it's casting a shadow from there, but we get a nice soft lighting. Now, we've got our model turned a little bit too much to the side. So Damien, uh, can you just turn, there we go, to face me. And normally we wouldn't face our model straight onto us, but uh, there we go. But it shows the classic Rembrandt position. Okay, and what you'll see is there is a lit side with the light coming across, and then there is a shadow side. But on the shadow side, there is a triangle of light. That little triangle there on the cheek is the thing that says, Rembrandt lighting. It's really simple and really effective. And I never use it. <laughs> Ever. Well, that's not true. It's a little bit like school photos for me. It, it's there, it's fine, but it's not particularly exciting or dramatic. And I like my, my portraits to be a little bit more exciting and dramatic. I mean, when I'm doing a family shoot or a, a, a business shoot, headshots for a corporate thing, you, you go that kind of simple, straightforward, predictable, safe route. But the rest of the time, no, I want, it, I want something more dynamic. So my simple one light, soft portrait position is somewhere over here. I bring the light down. Why? Because at six foot, what did I say I was? <laughs> six foot six, I forgot my own height. <laughs> at six foot six, I've got to keep reaching up to, to get the height. I'm not six foot six. I've got to keep reaching to change the flash, and I don't want to do that. So if I need to change the flash, I want it at my height. And then I put the light right over here, right next to the subject, almost at 90 degrees to them. Almost. Not quite. Um, Damien, could you just turn towards the light for me? That's the way. Lovely. Okay. And I put it as close as I can get it to my subject. So first of all, I don't hit him. Didn't hit you, did I? No. Uh, and secondly, I don't get it in my shot. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Are you going to change my microphone? Yeah. We'll have a short interval. <laughs> Is there any questions whilst we're, we're going? Yeah, you got it. Go on, go on Gabby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, if you're shooting events, then that might be very, very useful. Uh, it depends on many factors. Personally, I've not really used them enough to establish a, a definitely yes, you must have one or no, you mustn't. So it might be something you either want to try if you've got a, a friend who's got one or maybe you can rent them from Adorama Rentals. Um, just to give it a whirl before you, you give that, uh, uh, that cash out. But it could well solve your problems. Depends what the problem is. Right, let's swap over microphones. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Okay. Oh. Do we have another one from the internet? Is this thing on? I've never shot a car with an off-camera flash, but um, I, it depends what you're shooting. If you're shooting uh, a, a, a static car, if, if you're in a, an environment where you're shooting in a studio, if you have a studio big enough, 
Um, there are a few things you can do. Now, I've, I've seen it done, but I've not tried it myself, where you shoot individual sections of the car with one light, and then you use Photoshop to, to bring the sections together. Um, or you can gr get yourself a load of lights and, and light it separately. Things like uh, motocross and motorbikes when they're flying by and using flash just to put a little bit of burst of light in. And in those circumstances, what I would do is I would set to manual, but to aperture priority, just so I get a fill of light rather than a, a flood of light. So that would be uh, my tip, but uh, not something I can necessarily help with. Hello. You want to fiddle with my... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you dialing me up? Turn yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Ah, that's better, isn't it? Good stuff. Okay, so uh, any other sorry, was any other questions, Gabby? Or are we okay there? No, we're okay. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, my position is just over to the side here, nice and close, not hitting your subject, not getting your picture uh, to have the umbrella in the shot, and a real tight head and shoulders. Now this close, are you ready? Here we go. We're going to have to re-establish the exposure because it's almost certainly going to be wrong. But of course. Doing it live means that sometimes you more or less nail it. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> okay, maybe just a tiny bit. You can see on my histogram, I know the projected image, and I dare say the internet image, because I know you're not getting a live feed from my laptop, uh, isn't uh, quite as clear as, as my own screen. But you can see on the histogram here that the exposure is basically right. This big spike here, this is the blacks. There's a lot of black in this picture. That background is heavy and black, and it's the big spike. And the histogram extends all the way over to the other side, but it doesn't peak, so there's no uh, loss of, of detail in the highlights. It may be just a little bit too hot, or a little bit too bright, so we'll just turn either the flash down, or close the aperture down, or even lower the ISO. I'm still on 200 ISO, I could go down to 125, and we all know that gives a, uh, a shot with a little bit less noise which is always good. Yeah, that works really well. And what I love about this shot is the fact that you get a lit side and a shadow side, but the shadow side isn't totally, totally black. There's a little bit of detail in there. We can see Damien's eye, it's just there. And it's my favorite, favorite way of doing things. What we can do is we can come to the saturation and we can just knock out the saturation to make it a black and white. And that works really well again. The black backgrounds in black and white, really very nice. We cover the highlights. Works really well. Now, the beautiful thing about this setup is once you've got it right, once you've got it nailed, I'm working in manual on the flash, I'm working in manual on the camera, you can repeat this over and over again as long as nothing changes. So, just to prove the point, Damien, I hear you're a stunningly good photographer. <laughs> He'll try anything once. <laughs> Mate, no, it actually doesn't translate either. Um, <laughs> uh, Damien, if you want to grab my camera, uh, is it expensive? Please don't drop it. Please, please don't drop it. Please don't drop it. Oh, I don't know. Love giving your camera gear away. <laughs> I'm sure Adorama will replace it for me. Actually, drop it. Please drop it. <laughs> so I could do it with a 70D. Uh, and you're going to take the same shot of me. So that's, that's lovely. There we go. Notice the camera skill at work here. That's fantastic. The rapport. Hey, hey. Now, that's I, I just have let's, let's, let's just have a quick look before it comes up on the screen. I've seen worse. <laughs> I've seen worse. Little little tip. Maybe just zoom out a little bit further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're fine. That's that's it. Je that's it. Yeah. So the zoomy zoomy thing. That's that's the zoomy thing there. Look. Okay. You use your phone. <laughs> Everybody at Adorama is a camera expert. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's have a little look, quick look. Well done. That's really good. No, you've done well. Give me a round of applause. <laughs> And 
And once you're set, it works every single time, whether you're up close, whether you're far back, whether you're on the other side of the room, it's a setup that just repeats, and every single time it's great. So if you're doing a family photo se session, maybe it's your own family, perhaps you've, you've got them together for a special family gathering, set this up, flash really close, 90 degrees or thereabouts, and just get everybody to sit in the same position and do it over and over again. It works so, so well. If we go in close, not that close. Actually, I should have taken their mic off. Never mind. <laughs> okay. You'll see, can you see the sharpness in that shot? Can you see how much detail there is? I promise you, you will never take a sharper picture than you do with flash. Because it's not the shutter speed, it's not 200th of a second that's giving you the sharpness. It's the, f the flash only lasts for a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. And if you're coming back this evening where we do some more stuff with flash, you'll see why and how that works. Is there a question? Yeah. Mm. That's exactly right. So the question is, if, if you're shooting more than one peop uh, people, more than one person, uh, do it. So this system works great for single portraits. If you've got more than one person, you're going to have to think of an alternative. And the alternative is to back the light up. With a group shot, you're less likely to get a dramatic shot with one single light like this. You're going to have to start thinking about multiple lights. But there's a nice little trick you can do. Gabby, you've still got that reflector. I know, you thought you were finished for the... the <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep everything the same, but what we're going to ask Gabby to do is just use the reflector to fill in the shadow side of the face. So that's it. You just hold it there. You've oh, done this before, clearly. And we'll come in and take the shot. Okay. And we'll that's pop up on the screen. Here it comes. And can you see how the, the shadow side is a little bit more lit? Uh, Gabby, can you really close for me? That's the way. And the closer you go, now I've got to back it up just a little bit for me. Thank you very much. The closer you go, the more light that bounces back in. And effectively, what you're doing is you're getting two lights for the price of one. Because it bounces light in from the other side. And you can see up here, up here somewhere, how it's just put a little bit of sh shine in there. It's a secondary light source, almost a hair light to, to separate from the background. So you can use a reflector just to become a cheap second light. Every photographer should have a reflector. Seriously, they're just so, so useful. Every photographer should know how to fold it up. Away you go, Gabby. No, I'm joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> Folding these things up is, a, is an art form that takes years of practice. It really, really does. <laughs> but once you master it, you're, you're sorted for life. Okay, so it works really nicely. But what can we do if we don't want a black background? Can you get a white background from one flash? Yes and no. <laughs> it's another not very helpful answer. Right, do you want to stand up for me? Thank you very much. Okay, so short answer is no. If you want to get pure, pure white, you need more than one flash. Just the way it goes. In fact, if I'm shooting head and shoulder shots for corporate clients, I have a light very much like that at the front, and then I have a secondary light to illuminate the background. Otherwise, your background goes gray. Even if you buy something like this Westcott background that's beautifully white, it doesn't photograph white. It photographs gray because it's not lit. However, you can use your umbrella, or even better, your softbox as a background. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the flash power, and we're going to pump it up a little bit. Let's go to half power. Got to go somewhere. Okay. And we'll just put that there. So, do you want to stand in front of there for me? Now, wouldn't it be nice if I take a picture and the light wraps around the front and illuminates Damien and it would just work? Here we go. Wouldn't it be good? Amazing. Wouldn't you be impressed? I would, because it doesn't work. It's really impossible to get one flash to give you a white background that also illuminates the face. Now you can try and use a reflector. You can use a reflector to bounce a bit of light in, but it just doesn't work. If you want a pure white background, that's when you start thinking two lights. 
Okay, so that doesn't work, but there is a little trick. So just to finish off, just for the last ooh, 10 minutes, no less than that, it's going to be three minutes. Is there any questions, first of all, before I, I dive in? Good. Okay, so just for the last three minutes, we're just going to drop this down, and we'll just try and get that so it appears in my black background. And Damien, you might need to be a little shorter. I mean, seven foot, I'm really struggling. Okay, so you just drop yourself down a little bit lower for me. There we go. That's the way. Uh, and we're going to get black background in the shot. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> and we're going to get the umbrella in the shot. And we're going to use it to give us a silhouette. But at this point, that's not good. That's too bright. So I want to get a silhouette because we can get a white background and have a silhouette, but we can't have a white background and illuminate Damien. So let's get a silhouette out of this shot. So that's a little bit too much light. It's coming through too harsh. So we could either dial down the flash, close down the aperture, or drop down the ISO. They all work, and they are all correct. I'm going to drop down my aperture to, let's try F16. We'll give that a whirl. Okay, down you go. In we come. Here we go. So we're starting to get a silhouette coming out. So this is working quite well. I reckon I can go even lower than that. So what do we go? F22. That's the bottom of the shop. You didn't know you were coming here for an exercise day, did you? <laughs> Beats the gym this, doesn't it? And at F22, I get the silhouette that I wanted. Now, if this was a softbox, we wouldn't have the lines of the umbrella, but we have to live with those. Is Can you see how it's bright white here, but by the time we get up to the top, it's gone a bit gray. So remember, I'm on 24 millimeters for the flash spread. So spread it around, but it hasn't evenly filled the umbrella. There's one last trick up the sleeve of your speed light. One last trick. Let's go grab the, the speed light so I can show you and we'll carefully take it off the Frio. Every speed light that I've ever used has a little thing that pops out. Not, not the bit of white paper, that's something else, but that little flappy thing. That little Fresnel lens. That little Fresnel lens spreads the light in an incredible way. In fact, on the back of my, my flash here, it's now changed from 24 millimeters to 14 millimeters. That's a really wide spread of light. So let's put that on the umbrella. I'll just reattach that and double lock it in so it doesn't fall off. And we'll do exactly the same shot again. Okay, so if you want to just drop down for me. Fabulous. Brilliant. And the difference this time is that the umbrella is perfectly evenly illuminated. It's robbed us a bit of light. It's less powerful on the flash than it was before because we've got a, a physical barrier. But it gives us a nice even illumination over the surface of the umbrella in this case. And we get a good little silhouette. Has anybody got a camera with them? A proper SLR camera, not your phone. Can I can I borrow actually, uh, yeah chap there? Can I just borrow your camera for a second? So I know this really good photographer who takes amazing pictures, and I'm going to lend him your camera. Oh, it's a good one. Oh my goodness. Thank you. That's I'll swap it for mine. <laughs> okay, so Damien, you're going to hold that. Okay, there's a little hand thing. Put your hand through there. Insurance. That's it. Okay, because we need a silhouette with a shape, something dramatic and dynamic. You can do this as a self-portrait. Not you, because I'm taking your picture. What I want you to do is just turn to the side. Face those lovely ladies. Okay, and again, if you want to just drop down a little lower for me. Okay, and then bring the camera up to your eye. It's heavy, that one, isn't it? Fantastic. Wonderful. And we get a little self-portrait style shot that you can set up at home using one speed light, one umbrella, one light stand, and your spare camera. <laughs> or your friend's camera. Fantastic. Fan uh, can we, we will return that to the gentleman over there. Thank you very much for the loan of your camera. Oh, thank you. 
Okay, so that kind of brings us to the end of our little one light. Now, we've been through a lot of different pitches in an incredible short period of time. Let's just remind ourselves of where we started and where we've kind of run through. So if we go right back to the beginning, uh, we were taking pitches as good as that. With one light, you can start doing pitches like that. That's actually one of the better ones. We were, we were doing this as well. Look at that. Okay. So <laughs> if, if you're joining us late on the internet, that's where we started. And simply by getting our flash off camera and trying a few different setups, moving things around, getting different lighting, we managed to get all sorts of dramatic and interesting pitches. Only owning one flash is not a barrier to making boring pitches or exciting pitches. The barrier is you, your imagination, and experimenting and trying different effects and different lighting styles. Now, you don't have to have a model as good as this, and let's face it, he's absolutely <laughs> brilliant at what he's done. You can try this at home using yourself, your family, your kids, anybody who's brave enough to sit in front of your camera. And it is just the most fun to be had with your camera. And it doesn't matter what the weather is. You can do it day and night, come <laughs> sun or come snow. No snow tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Okay, any questions at all? Fabulous. And we're all good on the internet, hopefully. Even better. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our little presentation. Um, I'm going to be here for a little bit, so if you've got any questions you'd like to do without the internet watching, you're, you're welcome to come and ask me. And if you're joining me again later on, uh, I'd like to say great, and we'll, we'll see you later. Uh, I'd like to thank Adorama for making this possible, and I'd like to give you all a round of applause, but mostly for Damien. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> thank you very much.